Welcome to the Interesting Podcast, episode number 53. This episode is Beth Revis, who is great. Uh, we cover all kinds of stuff. We talk about how she met J.K. Rowling. We talk about how she wrote 10 novels before the 11th one was the one that got published. We cover her process. She used to be a teacher. Um, we're both from North Carolina, so obviously she's the best. Uh, and then we cover Rebel Rising, which is uh, one of my favorite Star Wars books of the new canon, and how that came to be in relation to Rogue One and all kinds of good stuff. Um, it's just really fun. She's super easy to talk to and just a good time. She's a good laugh. Uh, also, she's got a book coming out called Give the Dark My Love. It comes out September 25th, so definitely be on the lookout for that. Uh, until then, please enjoy the uh, interesting podcast, episode number 53, with Beth Revis. Theme song time. <laughs> There you go. There you go. Kids, you have you have one? One. He's about to turn three, and he's recently lost his pacifier. Oh, no. <laughs> yes, it's been a... It's been a <laughs> I'm glad to pass him off to the husband today. <laughs> there you go. I'm glad I could help. <laughs> yes. <laughs> I mean, they're called terrible twos for a reason. We we were lucky. They're just now starting to be terrible, so I, I suspect I'm going to get the terrible threes. <laughs> oh, no. That means it's had time to build. Yes. <laughs> He's just more, um, he's able to enunciate even more his anger at the world. <laughs> oh, boy. That's, I, I don't have kids, but that's like my biggest fear with children is when they learn to talk and then they think they know everything and you're like, you don't understand. And like, <laughs> I don't need to understand. I know for a fact you're wrong. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> my, my, my younger brother just had a baby and he's six months old. It's a, yeah, he's the cutest little guy. But it's so funny because he like, you know, he's new to the world, obviously. And I've never seen mm -hmm. a baby look like he's thinking so much. Ah! So, like, while you're talking to him or, like, anything, he just, he looks at you and he just kind of squints a little bit and he's like, huh, okay. He's, he's figuring out how to get in trouble. I know it. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> I'm on to this kid. <laughs> That's right. Every time they, like, FaceTime me, he always grabs the phone. He's like, this, this is definitely edible. Going in for tests. <laughs> <laughs> Oh. It's great. It's great. You're you're in North Carolina. Yes. Are you from there? Uh, yeah. I, I'm not from this county, but from this general area of Western North Carolina. Oh, right on. I am from North Carolina as well. Oh, awesome. Where are you from? I was born in uh, Elizabeth City, raised in a farm in the Outer Banks. Oh, very cool. I, Elizabeth City doesn't that have a. It used to have a ship, right? Yes. Yes, it did. I was there. I went there when I was a little girl. Oh, right on. It's uh, a. I mean, it's not the most fun place in the world. <laughs> but I mean, the, the ship. Yeah, there's, there's a boat. my name is Beth, and so I like I I remembered Elizabeth City. <laughs> perfect, perfect. It's a right. uh, it, it's a place. It was the nearest hospital. <laughs> so, well, there you go. <laughs> so it was one of those, but uh, it's nice. I love North Carolina. It's it's so it's beautiful. It is. We're um we're near ish to Asheville. We're way out in the country, but All we're right. going to Wrightsville Beach in a few weeks. Oh, right on. Yeah. Very cool. Very cool. Asheville's nice. Yeah, Asheville actually is nice. We're hoping to move closer to there. Cool, cool. It's such a it's such a nice state. I like mountains, and we've got like the perfect amount of mountains without the elevation. <laughs> exactly. You know, as I've got asthma, so uh, God. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that would be a problem. <laughs> yeah, I'm going to Colorado later this year, and I'm like weirdly oh. scared. You'll you'll get used to it, I think, pretty fast. But yeah. I the first time I went to Colorado, I got off the airplane and it just like fell over. Oh God! Because of the the I don't know the elevation, whatever. I just wasn't used to it, and I just like my body was like, no, no, just fall over, and and I just fell over on the floor for a little while, and then I was fine after. There you go. You just had to acclimate. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <It's> on the floor. <laughs> right. Yeah, of course. Hey, whatever works. As long as you get back up. You know? Yeah, you get back up. That counts. <laughs> yeah, you don't want them to like have to have to drag you back onto the plane to somewhere that's lower. Yeah. Everybody just kind of looked at me and they're like, "Yeah, that happens sometimes." <laughs> <laughs> Can you imagine if that was like your idea of fun? Is like, let's just go to the airport in Colorado and watch people fall over. 
<laughs> that actually kind of would be entertaining. <laughs> right? It's like the best kind of people watching. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> that needs to be a series. Somebody, oh, yeah. Somebody needs to get on that. So, <laughs> Did I read correctly you're a brown coat? Oh, absolutely. Same. It's my favorite TV show of all time. It's so good. It is. It's such a – it's so funny how things now are trying to combine, like, you know, Western and sci-fi, but – Mm-hmm. It doesn't get better than Firefly, does it? No. Although I heard in um, Ready Player One, the Serenity is in the background in a scene. <gasps> what? Yeah. So I'm going to have to go just – like apparently it's a ship that drops off a secondary character in one scene. Oh, so wow. I'm going just to see that. Yeah. Oh, my God. I freak. Freak. Yes. I flew to Dallas a few years ago to meet Nathan Fillion because oh. he's like my hero. I mean, how can he not be? I know, and, right? <laughs> dude, he's the best. I got a, I got his autograph and a picture because if you're flying to another state, you got to drop some change. Oh, and, of course. <laughs> and I was dressed as Malcolm Reynolds at the time, so Aww. I got, I went, I mean, I went full out. I had the full on like replica coat and the holster and the pants and everything. And when I went in to take the picture, he goes, "And who are you dressed as?" Oh, and like brought me in for a hug. I was like, "Oh, this is even better than I imagined." Uh, I really want he is one of the few that I would pay money to see him and Mark Hamill and oh, yeah. Carrie, Carrie Fisher was very high on my list before mm-hmm. that, that's about the only ones I would really pay money to see but I would pay a lot of money to see them yeah fair fair yeah <laughs> I the only time I've ever been like embarrassed around mm-hmm. a, a celebrity hero was with Carrie Fisher oh no what happened so I I went to get uh an autograph with it, right? Because I, I got this poster made. It's like a a buddy of mine who's a graphic designer made like a, a custom poster. It just has the Star Wars logo outline and then a bunch of stars on a black field. Uh-huh. And so I've been collecting autographs on it for a bit. And Carrie Fisher came to Tampa because I'm in Florida. And mm-hmm. uh, I was like, oh, I got I to gotta get this. I waited. I was so excited. I got up like super early in the morning before the con even opened because I knew the line was going to be bonkers. Uh-huh. And she wasn't feeling well. So what she did was normally, you know, they have like a table and then they kind of lean over. You put the thing on the desk or on the table and then they sign it and they give it back to you. Uh-huh. Well, she wasn't feeling well. So she was sitting on her chair with like her feet on the seat and then her knees up. So oh, what she would uh-huh. do is she would just grab your thing that you wanted signed, put it on her knees and then write on it and then give it back. Well, I had this poster that I keep in a tube. So it's like rolled uh-huh. up, you know. So normally what we do is we wrap it like on one end of the table and on the other end of the table and it kind of just hugs it, you know, because it, mm-hmm. wa- it wants to roll up. Well, right. Be- because she was back, she kind of grabbed the corner of it and put it over her legs and I was grabbing the other end. It was kind of a weird little awkward thing. And my backpack only has one strap on me uh-huh. and it fell over onto her table as she was signing. And she's like, watch out for the Coke. And I almost knocked over her drink. And I was so oh, no. embarrassed. I was like, oh, my God. Oh, I'm so sorry. Uh, hey, hey, poster. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> Hi, Gary. All right, bye. <laughs> <laughs> oh, well, hey, at least you got to meet Gary. And that actually wasn't as bad as I was I was, I was, was expecting. I thought yeah. this was going to get ripped or something. <laughs> oh, my God. Can you imagine? I don't think <laughs> I would have the heart to tell that story. No, no. <laughs> no, I just, I just knocked, almost knocked over her Coke. And I was like, oh, oh God. I almost threw up on J.K. Rowling. <gasps> yes. Tell me. <laughs> Tell me the <this> story. <laughs> well, I, I learned after I got my first book deal that when I get really, really happy, I spontaneously vomit everywhere. Fair. Fair. And then I got the chance to meet J.K. Rowling. And, like, I didn't eat for 24 hours. I was like, I can't risk <laughs> And I went with a friend of mine, and my friend was my spotter. And you can see in the picture where I'm, like, handing my book to J.K. Rowling to be signed. And my friend's in the background, like, ready to dive in front of me and, like, <laughs> take the hit if I actually did start vomiting everywhere. So, <laughs> Oh, that's amazing. It was, it was pretty bad. <laughs> you know, that's a, that's, a good, that's a good response, though. You know, I, yeah. I respect that. I, I, I knew that I knew the issue and I did what I could. The same thing whenever I found out I had the Rebel Rising book deal yes. when I uh, flew out to read the script. I just didn't eat that whole day. <laughs> everybody had such wonderful, delightful meals. And they like Lucasfilm brought in this catered lunch. and It was gorgeous. And I was just like, no, thanks. I'm good. I'll just drink a water. <laughs> <laughs> Have you do you ever watch uh, Always Sunny in Philadelphia? Yeah, I've seen it a couple of times. Same. I haven't seen a lot of it. But I saw this video once, which makes this a weird sort of context anecdote. Uh, but there's this woman in the show that's like a stand-up comedian, and she throws up every oh. time. So she does this whole <laughs> thing where, like, no, I can't eat before I go on set. <laughs> Same sort of thing. You just you got to know ahead of time that way you can prepare accordingly. 
Exactly. Yeah, I, I need to watch that now because that is me. <laughs> it's so it's so funny. I'll send it to you. They like okay. uh, and what a friend. What a friend yeah. ready to take take the hit for you. Well, I mean, I didn't give her much choice. I was like, if you don't, I'll hate you forever. <laughs> exactly. Now is the time for the test. Yeah, and, and I was the one who got her the ticket, so she owed me. Oh, of course. that That's part of it. You're like, here's the deal. Mm-hmm. I'm going to get you a ticket, but what are you willing to do for it? Exactly. You're like, are and you I mean, she didn't ultimately have to, but, you know, the chance was definitely there. That's true. It's the thought that counts. Yes. You know, as long as the, it's like if you're willing to take the bullet, that's almost as good as taking it. Almost, yeah, yeah. yeah. Almost. <laughs> I mean, yeah, you just got to be down. You just got to be yeah. down. That's a friend. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. But you, do you travel a lot? You say you've been to Colorado and stuff? Yeah, yeah, I travel a lot. Yeah, me too. What places have you been? Um, I've been to about 40 of the states. Nice. Do you have a favorite? Yes. Um. I do like New York, but I really like the Pacific Northwest. Ooh, nice, nice. I like California a lot. I feel like it has, like, everything as far as climate. Yeah, because it's huge. I know. <laughs> no, you know it's huge? <laughs> Texas. You ever driven through Texas? I have. Oh, it's, it's the worst. Yeah. It's just flat and nothing to look at. <laughs> Man, I, I, I live in, like, southwest Florida, so it takes uh-huh. it takes six and a half hours driving at... 80 miles an hour, I've tested this, uh, Mm -hmm. to get from where I live to the Florida-Georgia line. And I was like, oh, six and a half, that's a long time. You know, Texas will be a breeze. Texas is like a day and a half to drive through it. It's crazy. It's it's really, really, really huge. You've been to Mm -hmm. London, I read. You live there? Um, I lived there for a college semester. How was that? It was fantastic. It was really, really good. Huge. Yeah, yeah. But they also have such a good train system yeah, within the city. And then to go anywhere in the country, it was great. Cool, cool. I went there for the first time last year, I think it was. Sick. I was I was uh, unprepared for the size. Yeah, it is it is very large. I think I was and I had like the American mentality of like, oh, you know, America, we do it big. No, no we don't. <laughs> no, that that city's much much older. Yes, exactly. It's had hundreds it's had of years to grow. Small. Yeah. <laughs> Exactly, exactly. The underground's amazing, though. It really is. And you, when you first look at... I, I had somebody on... Who was it? Uh, I think it was Hal Hickel. Um, who, he talked about the roadmap for London looks like a broken windshield. And I was like... I could see that, yeah. That is the perfect description for what it looks like. There's no, like, turn left here. They're all, like, diagonal spiderweb lanes. Mm-hmm. And yet the yep. cab drivers know them. It's amazing. Yeah. I, I could not do that. <laughs> yeah, no, no, definitely not. Definitely not. I think traveling's good for you. Oh, I, I, I definitely agree. It, it broadens your horizons and gives you new perspectives. It's really important. For sure. For sure. But I know you from your writing. Oh. So I have to ask you, when did you uh-huh. start? Um. Well, I wrote my first novel when I was a sophomore in college. Oh, right on, right on. Yep. How long did that take you? Uh like a semester i i don't remember i tried to write a short story and then it just kept going um and sure. it turned into a novel sure. um and i i submitted that one and it was soundly rejected and i submitted the next one and it was rejected and i submitted <laughs> the next one and the next one um so it took me 10 novels before the 11th one was published really yeah it was a long journey that is amazing though that you keep on going i feel I'm like very that's what it stern. takes yeah hey whatever works <laughs> Yeah, <laughs> you know, I think that's the key, though, in any sort of creative endeavor is like just keep going, you know. Yeah, I mean, it, it is true that if you're in it long enough, everything good and bad will happen to you. You'll have the book that gets picked up, the book that gets canceled. It'll all happen, but you have to stick with it. Sure, sure. So, when did you know that you wanted to be a writer? Then, oh, I, I don't remember not wanting to be a writer. Right My mom has a picture of me in first grade, like underneath the coloring sheet that I wrote a little story with. And I was like, look, it's my first book. And it was like literally five sentences. So <laughs> hey, not that counts. Like, yeah. You know, <laughs> well, you did... I hope that counts. But yeah, yeah I, I always mean... wanted to be a writer. I just didn't know I could make a career out of it. Sure, sure. And then you're saying your sophomore year, that was when you're like, hmm, this is viable. Yeah, I think I still at that time sort of believed that it would either be a side thing, like sure, it would come out and no one would know it, or I could be the next J.K. Rowling. Um, Fair. 
<laughs> it didn't it didn't quite work out either of those two ways. <laughs> Yet. Yet, Beth Ravis. Yet. Yet. You know. One day JK is gonna realize that, you know, she's got nothing on me. Yeah, please. I already <laughs> I already sent her the letters. I don't know if she got them. There's no post on Sunday, but uh yeah. that's cool. Ten novels though. Man. Ten years. Wow. Well, you wrote a novel a year? Mm-hmm. A novel a year for ten years. Wow. Was and that about a thousand rejections. I mean, but that's the that's that's the thing though. You just save those and then you're like, Oh, these are all the people that didn't believe in me. Well, who's laughing now? <laughs> That is true. <laughs> you know, you know, I have a friend who's an author as well. He just got his first novella published All and right. he was like freaking out. And I was like, this is great. And he goes, yeah, I've got like tons of rejection letters that I'm just saving. I was like, OK, just, you know, <laughs> don't read them all the time. <laughs> yeah, you can obsess. But... Yeah, exactly. Exactly. But I just, you know, it just makes it better because if you've if you've gone up this super 10 novel mountain, when you reach it, you're like, oh, oh, that's what this is. Well, and then also it, it really helped me as a person to get rejected and not have it easy. Like, oh yeah. As since then, I I don't mind long edits. I'm fine with if they if my editor says that I have to rewrite my whole book. I'm like, okay, that's fine. It it doesn't bother me as much, and I think that really helps overall. Gotcha. Okay, I feel like that would be the hardest part for me. Like, I mean, I'm not a writer. I don't have the attention span. Uh, but if if I was going to write something, I'm like, ah, I feel really good about this. And they're like, mm, do it again. I'm like, uh, I quit. <laughs> I oh, no, I would never be published if I did that. I have yet to write a novel. I haven't had to rewrite at least once. Wow. Is it true that writing is rewriting? Oh, for me, at least. Absolutely. Yeah, yeah. Well, yeah, my agent once told me, she was like, oh, you know, this is just part of your process and you enjoy it so much. I'm like, no, no. <laughs> I don't enjoy it. And I wish it were not a part of the process. <laughs> I, if I hear you. I, most authors that I've talked to, uh, including like Claudia Gray, she told mm -hmm. me, she's like, I love having written. Yes. I was like, ah, that makes sense. That makes yes. sense. I mean, it's much like baking a cake. Like nobody actually really, well, I guess some people are weirdos and like the work of it, but I just <laughs> cake. <laughs> fair, fair. Yeah. I'm with you there. I mm -hmm. see I'm horrible at cooking, but I feel like part of that is because it looks so gross in those middle stages. You know, mm -hmm. like I like the look of a steak, but man, halfway through it looks so gross. It's like, mm. it just takes time. It and does. There's television to watch. Oh, so much television. <laughs> There's so much good stuff. You were you were a teacher. Yes. How was that? It was I, it was actually really fun. I went into teaching fully expecting to like this would be a temporary job before you know I started making millions as a as a famous author. Of and course. I, like the the whole first year, I was like, I'm not making any attachments. This is just a temporary thing. <laughs> and I ended up really loving it. Um, I taught for six years, and then it got to the point where I knew I could not handle both writing and teaching. And um, I, when it was time for me to quit, like I had always dreamed of having this job where you kick down the door and you go, Ah, you can take this job and shove it. Yeah. <laughs> Instead, I went to my principal, like, in tears. I was like, I really love this job, but I have to quit. And I just <laughs> cried like a baby. And it was ridiculous. <laughs> That's amazing. What did you teach? I taught mostly high school English 10th grade. Um, oh, I also boy. did the yearbook and occasionally picked up, like, the juniors. And and uh, I think, I yeah, just some reading classes as well. Sure. Good on you. Yeah. I it was know really if I'd hard. survive. The reading part was not fun, but everything else was good. Sure, sure. That's pretty neat. And that, that seems to be the way to go, though, with every successful author. You know, it's like, I'm going to teach for a little bit. And you're like, oh, I'm going to teach the youth, but then I'm also going to be writing my novel on the side. It's, it's a very common thing. <laughs> yeah. Hey, you're around words. Yeah. You know, you're just, you're just feeding you're that. You're still focused on books and the craft and everything else. Sure, sure. What is, what's the, what is the hardest part you found about teaching versus about writing your own book? Because they both seem equally difficult in different ways to me. Um, the hardest part about teaching would be a combination of grading the essays because oh, God. 10 page essays from 150 students is a whole lot of essays oh, to grade. Goodness. Um, and, and dealing with like dealing with the parents. I had a few parents of precious students who oh, yeah. like, how dare you give Johnny a B minus? <laughs> like, I mean, sure. fortunately, like I was high school and I could just be like, yeah, whatever. That's what your kid got. Right. But it, it was a pain to deal with them. Um, but for writing it, it Whatever part I'm working on in the book, that's the hardest part. Really? <laughs> yeah, definitely. Oh, oh dude, we're going to dive down into that. What, <laughs> so you were a teacher first, and then you're like, oh, writing's calling. What was the hardest part about that? Like, 
Because that's from a job that's like steady and -hmm. guaranteed to chasing your dream. I mean, that that takes a lot. Oh, yeah. I didn't quit teaching until I had a paycheck from writing. Smart. Yeah. I knew you were smart, but now now I know, no. Yes, yes. No, no. I definitely, until I could afford it afford writing to be the full-time job. I didn't quit teaching um, because the most difficult part about that is health insurance. Oh, yes. Yeah. For sure. Good times. Thank you, Obamacare. Yeah, I know. For real. <laughs> oh. what, what was your, so your first novel that gets published, walk mm-hmm. me walk me through this. You've written 10 novels and then you get yes. this one and you get, I'm assuming it's a letter. Yeah. Um, well, at first, it's yeah. It's an owl. It, <laughs> it's an owl. <laughs> they sent it to me through the Flu Network. Yeah. Um, <laughs> so the the 11th book was um, what became Across the Universe, which was oh, my right day. On. Um, yeah, it was it was awesome. I had gone through all of this rejection, and the book before that was actually the one that had been the worst received. Oh no! And so I was definitely at a point where I was like, okay, yeah, no, this is not working, and I'm wasting too much time and money on this. Sure. I just quit. But I had the idea for Across the Universe, um, and I wrote it fairly quickly, and I sent it out, and I knew fairly quickly that this was getting a different reception. Um, I went from having never had an agent offer for my work ever to having five agents offer for my work. Wow. Um, I got to interview all the different agents and, and basically pick the one I liked the best, which was a very surreal experience. Yeah. Um, do a lot of the interviews during school hours. So fortunately I had the yearbook class and I'd be like, okay, yearbook kids, nobody kill each other. Miss Revis is going to the parking lot. And I would like run to my car and take these phone calls from literary agents. And it was, it was a very, very weird experience. <laughs> oh man. That, but you mm-hmm. made it, you broke through. That's what those yeah. novels were, were getting you ready for. It was super, super awesome. Yeah. I can imagine. It's like it, the dreams materializing. So, yeah, I mean, it literally is is the dreams coming true. There's a, I mean, not to keep bringing up Harry Potter, but no, there's a there's a line in there where um, Ginny was talking about the Weasley twins and said something like, you know, that they just made you believe that anything was possible. And as soon as this happened to me, like, oh, I had a dream and it came true. Anything really is possible. It kind of cemented that idea in me. I, it totally changed my whole outlook on life. Sure. I love I love stuff like that, man. I, I'm a diehard – anyone who's listened to the show knows already. I'm a diehard Qui-Gon fan. Oh, he, wow. He's my dude. And yeah. at like eight, eight years old when he's like, your focus determines your reality. I was like, oh, mm-hmm. my God, this is my mantra forever now. <laughs> so, so I'm, I'm I actually you. have that on a poster in my room right now. <laughs> Beth, Beth, we just became best friends. I know, right? Yeah, oh, my <laughs> God. He's the best. The best. So yes. across the universe, first off, great idea for a novel. Thank Anything you. with cryogenically frozen people, I'm into. So right, well and murder in space. Yeah, of course. Mm-hmm. I love it. I love it. Thank so, you. what is it about the the YA genre that you like? Um, I th- I always liked y- YA before I even knew what YA actually was. Mm-hmm. Um, my favorite novel as a kid was A Wrinkle in Time and nice. Chronicles of Narnia, which I mean they're a little bit younger than YA, but I always liked that sort of fast paced character driven story. That was that what I gravitated to. Um, And then when I was in college is when the YA genre kind of became a thing. Right. uh, Through like Harry Potter and Twilight and the Hunger Games and all those kind of happening. Um, And it really became sort of a viable genre that people were actively pursuing. Um, And I realized like, that's what I always wanted to write anyway. And that's what I had always written, even when I was writing things that were technically like adult characters it was still a YA plot sure Um, so yeah I mean I definitely found my home there and I've loved it ever since I love it as well it's it has a I don't know I mean to bring it back to Harry Potter it has kind (laughs) of like a magical feel to it almost you know there's like no pretentiousness in the YA genre it seems to me well there's some (laughs) oh no behind the scenes of course (laughs) yeah but like I, I think a lot of your favorite movies, and I mean you and the general, like, out there, you people, sure. your favorite movies tend to be YA. Like, yeah. that tends to be the demographic. Star Wars, all the Star Wars movies are YA. 100%. Like, if, you, if you really look at what they are, they're YA. Most of the Marvel movies, most of any movie that's not, like, a Nicholas Sparks movie is YA. Yeah, for sure. It, it's accessible. It, seems. it is. Yeah, I mean, and, and ultimately, it is a character-driven, fast-paced plot, and that's what most people want Agreed. out of stories. For sure. I totally agree. <laughs> so what what is what is your writing process? Because I've heard some crazy things from, like, I forgot who it was, but I heard an author was like, I just write 
the locations, and then I write the dialogue, and then I write the middle words. And it's like paint with blue, paint with red, paint with green. And that sounds like three times the work. That sounds insane. Yeah, I know, right? Crazy. I, no. I, no. I, I, I think my mother always says it's my German ancestry, but <laughs> I always like – it, I type it and it's like the full sentence and I, I cannot jump around. I just, I just tell the story as it comes in chronological order and that, that's it. I don't do it three times. That's a good idea. I mean, I don't recommend it. I'm here to make you feel better about your process, Beth. I, I do. I do. I want to talk to this other author and buy them a lot of drinks because I think they need more alcohol in their life. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I agree. I agree. Oh, man. What do you write on? Um, I almost exclusively type my work on a, a writing program called Scrivener. Cool. It's a really, really excellent. It's, it's built for novelists. And uh, I just I just type it up and I'll edit it in Microsoft Word. And usually I don't see the printed book until it's actually a book. Wow. Yep. Right on. It's better than George R. R. Martin who writes on oh, like – he writes on like a, a dot computer that's like from the 1980s. No wonder it takes so long. <laughs> oh my God! Tell me about it. It's been what oh. seven years? The way wow, for the yeah. last book. Come oh, on, John. for real, man. <laughs> I understand you're super successful and rich now, but we've been waiting. I know. Yeah. Yeah. So I always think about that now with authors, with him writing on like you know a dinosaur of a computer, because he's like, you know, I just trust it my way. I was like, I understand, but we have mm -hmm. wheels now to make cars go faster. There's, it's there's, true. Yeah. There's ways to do. Get one of those voice memo things. <laughs> I guess, I mean, if I was him, I would just like talk my stories and hire a secretary to type them for me. Right. Right. Go, yeah. Yeah. Apparently that's what Kevin J. Anderson does. Oh, that's fantastic. He's amazing. He really is. I had Claudia Gray on recently and we just like gushed uh -huh. about Kevin Anderson for forever. Yeah. <laughs> She's like, I did not best. realize how he really is, and he he writes so much. He he do, he just it just happens. It's like the books are already written in his head, and he's like, need to get it out. That's man. <laughs> yeah, he like he goes on. From what she was telling me, is like he goes on walks with like a recorder, and just like oh, and this happened, this happens. I was like, what kind of a being is this? No, I tried to do that whenever I was pregnant, and then dealing with the child. I was like, okay, the kid doesn't care. He he's too little. He doesn't know what I'm saying. I'll just say my stories it, it didn't work out <laughs> then your stories i tried to up... dictation software things but my southern accent just got in the way all the time i hear you i hear you being from north yeah. carolina i don't enunciate no you just kind of put the words together <laughs> yep pretty much yep <laughs> yeah you know how it is get that sweet tea uh, so... <laughs> exactly <laughs> so when when you are writing short story short stories versus novels do you attack it differently or is the process the same um, I do have to attack it differently um, to a certain extent. I, I kind of, when I'm writing a novel, I'll know the beginning and I'll know the end. Uh -huh. And then I'll sort of flub my way around the middle and get there. Um, but for a short story, I kind of have to know what the whole thing is. Just sure. especially so you know in order where you're going. To, yeah, to know where I'm going, but also to make sure I keep it short. Because otherwise I'll just ramble on and on and on and then end up with a novel. Sure. So... <laughs> Short stories, I find to be they're they're their own beast, and they're a little bit more a uh, different structure. They have to have a different type of ending. Sure, that's fair. Mm -hmm. That's fair. And yeah. then I I cannot have you on and not talk about mm -hmm. Rebel Rising. Okay. <laughs> Rebel Rising. I'm gonna warn you ahead of time. I'm gonna geek out on you. Okay. I can't help it because Lord. I adore this book. Oh, thank you. <laughs> Adored it. So I uh, we're gonna start from the beginning. How long did okay. it take you to write that? Um, it took about three and a half weeks. What? Yeah. <laughs> less than a month? Yeah, it was, it was, yeah, about less than a month. Um, wow. Yeah, I just locked myself in the office and said, okay, husband, you have the baby, good luck. Man, that is insane. Well, I mean, it did help that I had a solid outline that I worked with Lucasfilm Publishing on, and I kind of knew where I was going with it, and it was just putting all those pieces together. Sure. I mean, still. Still, three and a half weeks to write a, a book. That is great. I don't get anything done in three and a half weeks. It was, it was kind of crazy. Um, I, now, to be fair, I did have to rewrite it, obviously, because I rewrite everything. Of course. Um, and edit it and everything. It was not a clean draft. Yeah, but... you weren't like published in three and a half weeks, yeah. got your first copy in. <laughs> yeah, I didn't just send it straight there. No. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> it took a chunk of time, but it was, it was the first thing I've ever written. That's crazy. When did you start writing it in relation to Rogue One? 
Oh, I started writing it in um, the late spring, actually about now, the the spring before it came out. Oh, okay. So at, in about April, the book, the movie came out in December, and I had read the script in April or, or March, one of those, in the springtime before then. Sure. And then had it done before summer. Gotcha. Okay. Okay. Yep. That's awesome. Yeah I, yeah, I I really really dug it. Um, so how did how did that come to be? Did you like apply to them? Did they come to you? How does this work? They they came to my agent and my agent called me up one day, um, and I still sort of like I'm always on edge when somebody calls me. I'm like, what did I do wrong? Uh, <laughs> Same. She calls me up and she's like, you like Star Wars, right? And inside of my head, I start screaming like <laughs> very high pitched only dogs can hear of course <laughs> um, yes yes i love star wars and she said have you heard of the star wars anthology movies and i was like i, I mean i had heard a little bit of it um mm -hmm. and at this point they didn't even have what it was going to be they just had felicity jones attached and so my agent said well they're they're interested in having you write a ya novel dealing with the felicity jones character and that is all i had um, and at that point the screaming left my head and entered my mouth and i just started screaming <laughs> And I told my agent, I was like, do it, do it, but I'll do it for free. I just want to do it. And she was like, okay, um, you're not to talk to them until after we get a contract. <laughs> smart, smart. Yes. Yeah. yes. Lock that <laughs> down. Yeah. Of course, ever since then, every time anyone asked me about it, I was like, I'll do anything for Star Wars for free. And I can just imagine my agent, like, pinching the bridge of her nose, like, shut up. <laughs> exactly. We still have uh, bills, really Beth. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I hear you, though. I'd do the exact same thing. Whatever it is, just sign me up. I know. Just let me do it. I just want to do it. Yeah, right. Please. <laughs> you start sending them letters. Hey, well, uh, you got you got anything else coming coming down? Yes. I'm, I'm available. I mean, <clears throat> if you need anything. Anytime. anytime. <laughs> yeah, of course. Of course. How um, how closely did you work with the story group and and things like that? Oh, very closely. Um, we. I, I'm, I'm general generalizing dates because I've slept a lot. So oh, of then, course. <laughs> um, if we, if I heard about it on Monday, the deal was final by Friday. And by the next week I was on an airplane to San Francisco. Wow. It was really, really fast and very surreal. Um, but I, I was able to fly out to San Francisco and meet a lot of the other authors who did works um, along the same lines with the rogue one, like the like grouping. Sure. Um, and that, that was also very awesome. Like Greg Rucka and Jason Fry, they were all awesome dudes. It was amazing to be able to talk to them. Yeah. Um, and then we got to read the script and talk with story group um, individually and as a group. I got to see some early images um, that helped me a lot to visualize the character because Felicity Jones has a certain way of fighting and certain weapons that oh, yes. I was able to hone in on and then use that to train and sort of go backwards. Um, but yeah, it was a really intense, uh, couple of days. And then I got on the airplane and as I was on the airplane, I was start I was already scribbling notes on the flight home. That's so cool. It's like camp. It was. <laughs> At that point you become like a part of the story group. Cause you're like, all right, here's the details we're going to plant in each of our books. Cause like I've, I've read almost all of the new canon. And I remember in your book, you mentioned the octave stairway, which mm -hmm. is also in catalyst and Tarkin. And then yes. Bloodburn, which is in Bloodline. And I was like, yes. the synergy. <laughs> it's good. There was a very intensive um, amount of research that I wanted to do because I wanted to put those details in. Um, and so I, I downloaded as many as I could on audiobook because I can do audiobooks faster than textbooks. Same. And I listened to them on three, three times speed. Oh, so nice. <laughs> Zipping through my brain. So anytime I wasn't at my computer, I had the audiobooks of all the canon novels to date, like going through my head as fast as humanly possible. Man, I love that. Because I think yeah. that that's like one of my favorite things about like since the Disney acquisition is like mm -hmm. everything is tied in. And I your know. book is very, very tied into the others. So anytime oh. there's there's a little thing, I'm like, oh, 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 I know what this is. <laughs> Thank you. That that was something that I really worked hard on because I really wanted it to be that way. So I'm glad you noticed that. <laughs> oh, oh, not only did I notice that, I'm glad you brought up the looks of things so that you can you can get really into the details of that because that is one of my favorite things about Rebel Rising is how detailed you get. And like, I'm a big aliens guy. I mm -hmm. love creatures. I'm a big fan of the creature department and VFX and all this stuff. And your aliens, like the mm -hmm. Wraiths, are so cool. Thank you. <laughs> where Where did you come up with this idea? Because they're like, they're weird. 
they're weird. This but is like... gonna sound so dumb. Um, yeah. <laughs> I, I, I was scrolling through Facebook one day, and one of my friends had posted a picture of baby manta rays. <gasps> yes. And they were really super cute, and I was like, I want to make them into creatures, and that's where the rays came from. Oh my god, that's amazing! You're like, let's torture one to death. <laughs> <laughs> oh yeah <laughs> you're awful well that is, <laughs> the one that's tortured to death um this is gonna make me sound psychotic Let's do it. um somebody was was very mean to my mother and so i named that character after that person that was mean to my mama oh man she made my mama cry so i killed her in my book there you go that's yeah. how you do it <laughs> wow okay it was good. Yeah, and originally I wasn't even going to kill that character, and then I talked to my mama, and I was like, no, no, she's going to die. She's going to die. to go. (laughs) (laughs) Also, how do you – a question I always like to ask ask authors, if I can Mm -hmm. learn to talk today, uh, how do you name things? Because Asiak is a pretty interesting name. I I can't remember how I named that one. Um, Yeah, names names end up being – pretty hard um especially in a star wars one where all the names have to be something a little different not just you know normal earth names um some of them were named after people or um things i know like there's a character in there named reesey amps yes and um <laughs> those are my dogs ah. <laughs> i have a dog named champ and a dog named sirius who we call siri so i just switched the letters around and got reesey amps <laughs> that's amazing um, there is a character in there. Um, I had, uh, I was writing in a hotel cause I was at a co- convention and, um, they had a bottle of, I think it was Dasani water. Uh-huh. So there's, there's a character in there. Um, it's one of the people that Akshaya works with who, um, if you rearrange the letters, it's, it's Dasani water. Oh, I love this. I'm just staring at my hotel room. I'm like, I need a name. <laughs> it's it's yeah. like every, every comedy. What's your name? Uh, Blue Blue Carson. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> That's amazing. Because, I mean, you're in Akshaya, Zarada, Idressa. Like, mm-hmm. they are sweet names. Oh, thanks. Um, Akshaya is actually a person I met um, at a different, at the Boston Teen Book Festival. She was in my signing line, and I was signing a copy of one of my books for her. And I was like, That's a really good name. She's like, Oh, thanks. I was like, I'm going to take it. <laughs> wow. So she was a real person. Um, Zarada comes from. Uh, a Star Wars author um, who's also a YA author, um, Zoraida Cordova. Oh, yeah. I was I was on Twitter one day scrolling for names, and her name came in my newsfeed. And I was like, I love your name. It's now in the book. <laughs> <laughs> right. Ha-ha. Take that. Mm-hmm. I love that. I, I don't know where Idrissa came from. Uh, you're genius. Definitely not true. <laughs> I, th- I think it is. I think, uh, I think I'm actually on the record as saying it. Um, <laughs> Uh, yeah, dude. So I love, I love all of that. I think that's amazing. Another scene I really liked was Saw's training. Oh yeah. Saw's training was so cool to add that little bit of, you know, like he was in the Clone Wars, obviously. Mm -hmm. So what we're going to do is have him train with broken droids. Yes. I dig it. I dig it a lot. Yeah. He, I watched, um, I mean, he's, he is in the Clone Wars and he has a couple of episodes in in his arc. But I, I think I have those those episodes memorized by this point um, because I just rewatched them and rewatched them, trying to get those tiny details. And when I originally saw those, I don't think I connected that he was partially to blame for his sister's death. Right. And once I was really intently watching it and saw that, I was like, oh, this is going to change everything. All right. Ha ha. Well, we found it. <laughs> I mean, that man, he's broken all over. So I just had to figure out how he got broken. Fair, fair. Another thing that I really love about this book is how you combine colors. And I really enjoyed the most horrifying scene of them all with the flechettes. (laughs) (laughs) I was like, mother of God. (laughs) Just just razor blades and blood and petals. I was like, this Mm -hmm. is beautifully terrifying. Ah, uh, thank you. That's my favorite scene. That that was that was literally my favorite scene. It was also one of the few scenes that survived from the first draft all the way to the final draft. Really? Yeah. It's a hardcore scene. I really, really loved. I mean, it should be noted that my next book coming out is um, it's called Give the Dark My Love, and it's about necromancy, and I literally kill everyone okay. and then bring them back from the dead and kill them all over again. Hey. Uh, so you know, that's the kind of writer I am. I love but, it. I, yeah, that was my favorite thing to write. Um, and it took me forever to figure out the, the Sakula blossoms are 
because at the time I was writing that it was spring and then I have a cherry tree in my backyard and there's pink blossoms falling everywhere. Yeah. And you know, the Japanese word for cherry blossom is sakura. So I just changed that to sakula and changed the colors. Um, so that, that part was easy, but the fletchettes, um, I had to dig a little deeper into that and find some Mandalorian background for those. It's that's hardcore. Oh, okay. Just slaughtering people. You're like, oh, this is why Amon Mothma doesn't get along with Saw. I get it. <laughs> See, they have different philosophies. We'll yes, just say that. that is a fair way to put it. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, I love that. I love the um, uh, the white fur of the prisoner getting beat and then blood on the fur. And just the, the contrast of colors, you really, really hey. did well. I, noticed, I didn't even know I was doing that. I noticed these things, Beth. I noticed these things. Oh. You're going to give me a, a very big head, and I highly approve of this situation. I mean, I'm here to help you, not that <laughs> you need it. But like you said, you've got you've got a new book coming out. It's exciting. Yes. It's coming out September 25th, and it's about necromancy and death and grief and blood and lots of more death and, and then some more death on the side. It's called Rebel Rising 2. <laughs> <laughs> That's awesome. That's awesome. So how long have you been working on this one? Um, this one took forever. Yeah. <laughs> um, it took me, you know, three and a half weeks to write Rebel Rising, but three and a half years to write Give the Dark My Love. Wow. So this is a huge deal. Yeah. Well, I mean, I, I think only to me, but um, I actually had a draft of this written before Rebel Rising and then two more drafts written after Rebel Rising. It's, this this book has been like the bookend of the Star Wars endeavor trying to get this one out right. But wow. Every- <laughs> Dude, congrats. That's huge. Yeah, we'll see. We'll see how it comes out. <laughs> it's going to be great. I already know. I peeked ahead. Uh, so I really love it. You're, you're, you got on the New York Times bestsellers list. Yes. Let's talk. How how was that? What's going through your head? How many times did you throw up? <laughs> I, I got on my throwing up for the, the New York Times bestsellers list with um, Across the Universe because it actually debuted there. Yeah. Um, and I didn't know that it had – and I actually was opening up um, – my bills for the week and was filling out my bills on the kitchen table when friends started calling me and texting me like, Oh my gosh, you hit the list. And I was like, what list? I don't know. What you're talking about. <laughs> it was so far off my radar that it was even a possibility that I didn't even know. Um, so I, I got all of my, my nerves and throwing up done with that <laughs> one. Fair, fair. And then, um, then, uh, rebel rising also hit. And that was, that was amazing. Um, and it hit number two, which is the highest I've ever hit on the list. And, I have no no illusions that it was anything other than the Star Wars name on the title, but it's still really, really awesome, and I, I'm very proud of that moment. Mm, I would say it's also your writing, because there are some not stellar Star Wars books out there. Um. <laughs> <laughs> well, I have not read those yet. <laughs> I have, so you don't have to. Uh, <laughs> yeah, amazing, amazing. That's so cool. I, I'm, And I also, I love your personality. I gotta say it. Thank you. It's a, And I love when good people have good things happen to them and i also love that it took a long road to get there because that's the story that like everyone sees you know the overnight successes yeah you know it's like the overnights is actually like a 10 year overnight success and yours was a literal 10 novel journey (laughs) and i to be honest my publisher even i remember there was one uh I think it was BEA, which is uh, Book Expo America. There was a speech that my publisher gave, and he talked about like plucking me from obscurity, and I was (laughs) going to be this overnight success. And meanwhile, everyone who was there was that I knew was texting me like, "Does he not realize you had been working on this for ten years?" Like, (laughs) even people who are overnight successes, I guarantee you, they still had a decade of trial. For sure, I was thinking about that when I go to like cons, and there's. There are panels that are happening, and the moderator doesn't know anything about the person they're moderating. Uh huh. And I was like, "Do you do you not get any of the? Did somebody needs to switch this person out. Like, <laughs> let's get some <laughs> respect up in here." <laughs> <laughs> That's great, though. Do, so, do you have any advice for uh, aspiring writers? Um. Well, I think you know, there's the standard: don't give up and always keep trying. But to go the other way, I would say that. If you're ever given the choice to try something new mm-hmm. and completely go outside of your comfort zone, even if it's, you know, just go down the street and meet somebody you've never met before or stay in your office and write, like go do the new thing. Because the more you live your life and the more new experiences you get, this touches back on what we were talking about with travel too. Yeah. The more you go out there, the more stories you will actually have to write. 
So don't, don't feel like you have to just sit there all the time. There's definitely a point where you need to just put your butt in the chair and do the work, but get the stories from living a life well. That is great advice. Thanks. I dig it. I dig it a lot because the uh, writing, I, I, I was just talking to somebody recently about this and they were saying that uh, encouraging an artist of any sort uh, will have them believe that they can get to places that they may not have known was possible before. And when mm -hmm. you do that, everybody wins because their yeah. art gets put out into the world. Mm -hmm. and, and I love that. I love that. Do you think, uh, because I know that writers have like conferences and stuff that they go to. Have mm -hmm. you been to any of those? Yeah, I've been to several. I really, really enjoy it. I think I still have a little bit of the teaching bug in me as well. So I, I teach workshops sometimes and oh, right on. do critiques. And I'm like, I, I still want to do that. I still like that. I think by teaching sometimes. Sure, sure. Have you ever done the, uh, what is it called, NaNoWriMo? NaNoWriMo, yeah. I, um, I, I have done that. I've never actually successfully done it. Okay. But I have written books in a month, just not in <laughs> yeah. November. You're right. <laughs> You're right. You've written bestsellers in a month. So uh, who's laughing now? Well, I've written the draft of them in a month, that counts. not the final. That counts. I can't write anything in a month. I have a hard time I... doing anything. Uh, that's why I have a, I, my ADD is super fun. So I have a lot of guests on, and I bounce around. But, there you go. Yeah, of course. You know, it's all about the process is what I tell myself. <laughs> uh, but that is that is amazing. I'm so glad to hear that this new book is coming out. Um, do you I'm have, very uh, yeah, when so okay, I have a, I have another one that I like to ask. When you're writing a book, right, and you know it's going to be more than one, uh huh. How do you attack something like that? Do you like, oh, save that for later, or I'll do this now? No, you leave everything on the page. Really, you'll get more ideas later. So whatever your good idea is, like, don't save it. Just put it put it down. Wow. Yeah. I like yeah, it. I'm not thinking of the planning, and that's why I, you know, I'm working on sequel right now and crying a lot and drinking yeah. a lot. <laughs> that's why I ask. I have no idea what's going to happen because I put it all down for the first one. Sure. At, at that point, do you like, when you're getting deals, are they like, okay, I want a book? Or they say, I want a three book deal. I want a two book deal. And you're like, oh, I'll take it. Oh, God. This was, this was an <laughs> idea for one. Yeah. No, that, that actually, that's happened to me from the start. Across the Universe was supposed to be one book and it was going to end exactly how it ends. Really? Like very open-ended. They're, they're in a spaceship, but they're not at the planet. They, it was going to end that way. Um, and my agent was like, yeah, everyone's going to super hate you for that. <laughs> <laughs> and so um, we sold it in a three book deal and I, I got the agent and we were subbing it as one. Um, and then like I'm making up days again, but say like on Friday, she said, you need to have an outline for the next two and it needs to be ready by Monday. And so like over a long frantic weekend, I came up with the proposals for the next two books because I had no idea what to do. Wow. Are you good with, are you good with deadlines? Do they help? Um, I think they help get the work done, but I also think they help make my stress like insane. <laughs> Of course. But yeah, I, I do think I actually work better with deadlines. That's good. That's good. Because that's, mm -hmm. that's part of the gig when you're working yeah. with any sort of IP. It's like you have to be able to work in a deadline. Yeah. And I mean, let's be honest. I'm going to procrastinate to the last minute anyway. Same. So at least let me know when the last minute is. There you go. <laughs> it's a good idea. Do you? Oh, do you have advice for mm -hmm. any aspiring writer that wants to work with like a known IP? Um, I would say like... Don't be a, don't think that you're unprofessional if you're a fangirl or a fanboy. Mm -hmm. um, I, I actually asked some of the people that worked at Lucasfilm. I was like, how did you, you know, pick me? Like, what did, what happens so that I can do it again so you'll pick me again? Yeah. <laughs> and and uh, my publicist was like, well, when we were banding about names, like obviously they were looking for the genre of sci-fi. Sure. But I had had several pictures of me going to the Force Awakens movie where I had done my hair up in Princess Leia buns and things like that. And so they knew I was a fan. And I would I would say like that that was a part of it. Like there's a little bit of me who was always like, oh I have to be professional, but then like my fangirl just bust out because I just love the things I love. Sure. So like do that. Like love the things you love and, and hope that it gets in your way. Um and then, you know, have a really great agent who will help you out with those deals. There you go. Do you, ooh, <laughs> that's another great one because I'm all about the process. Do you? What advice do you have for, like, getting an agent? Because that's, that's what opens all the doors. 
Yeah, I, honestly, I, and I know that there are some really fantastic authors who work without agents and they've never had a problem with it. And they do IP work with Star Wars and, sure. and other things. So I, like, it's definitely possible to do it without an agent, but mm-hmm. I've only ever done it with an agent. Um, I think the best advice I have for that is don't sign any, don't sign with an agent out of desperation. Mm-hmm. Um, because I was definitely at that point. Like, I, I have no illusions that I was you know, smart or anything. I just got lucky that the book that got the agent attention was the one that got me the right agent. Um, but I would have signed with anybody, like anybody on the side of the street. If they're like, I'm a literary agent, I would have been like, here's my soul. Um, and I'm so, so, so glad that that's not the case. Cause I have a lot of writer friends who like me had gotten to that point of desperation and they signed with people who weren't that great. And it really is true that a bad agent is worse than no agent, like hold out for the right agent. Sure, that's great, great advice. And so, having <laughs> with your stress levels being where they need to be to get a book done, and having a kid, which one is more yeah. stressful? <laughs> um, it depends <laughs> sure. on how close we are to the book deadline, and or how many hours he's been screaming for a specifier. <laughs> so. It's all it's all relative. <laughs> there's there's all there's a scale there. That's right. <laughs> it's too cross. <laughs> Is there something you've always wanted to write but haven't got to yet? Um, I would love to write a graphic novel. Ooh. Um, yes. I got my first taste of writing a comic book for um, IDW Star Wars, and I really, really loved it, and I really want to do more with that. Um, so I'd love to write a graphic novel. Um, I'd love to write something for, like, Doctor Who or Firefly. I love yeah. those guys. <sighs> those would be awesome. One day. One day. <laughs> one day. One day. <laughs> I love it. I love it. Well, yeah, I've you know, I've taken plenty of time. We've been talking for almost an hour already. Oh yeah. That went fast. It did. Thank you. I appreciate <laughs> that. It's much better than the alternative response. <laughs> <laughs> but, but yeah, this was really fun. You were a blast. Oh thanks. Uh where can people find you online? I am at Beth Revis on basically everything but Facebook, and on Facebook, I'm at author mm-hmm. Beth Revis. Sweet. Got to get that SEO. Yep. <laughs> I'm with you. I'm Jedi Brian on everything, so great yes. minds, great minds. <laughs> but yeah, this was super fun. I really appreciate all your time. Thanks so much. This was awesome. Thank you. And... Hello, friends. Thank you so much for listening to this episode of uh, The Interesting Podcast. Uh, if you want to follow me on Twitter, it's at Jedi Brian. If you want to follow the show, it's at Pot of Interest on Twitter. And uh, if you enjoyed this, uh, if you wouldn't mind, go to iTunes and give it a five-star rating. That pushes us to the front of uh, the iTunes algorithm, and it helps book guests. Um, yeah, so I really appreciate you listening. Until next time, be well. <laughs>